So uh, most of you probably, probably know us already at this stage. My name is Nadine Early and I'm the Academic Director at ATC Language Schools. Um, I'd like to introduce you today to my colleague Joanne Mitten. Joanne has worked with ATC since 2009. Uh, she's worked as a teacher, a teacher trainer, a materials uh, writer, course developer, academic director. Um, she works in human resources, looking after all the staff, looking after us all. And she also works um, in quality assurance. So she has um, many, she's, she has had and does have many different roles across the school and understands the working of the school from many different perspectives. So today, Joanne is going to talk about um, an area that really should, should never be overlooked when we are uh, planning and developing and indeed delivering uh, programs for our students. And that's the area of student pastoral care. So during the past uh, difficult year that we have all had, um, this, this has been all the more important, particularly when we consider uh, students who um, are in lockdown um, away from home um, in a different country, separated from family and from friends and from uh, places that they know, people and places they know. So it is really our responsibility to ensure that we provide for their welfare as well as for their academic development. So I believe that we do this very well in ATC. Um, so today Joanne is going to share with us uh, some tips and activities for delivering student welfare um, and also uh, for providing a really good um, engaging uh, social programme online. Um, <clears throat> she will also look at tips for pastoral care when returning to school buildings, uh, which we hope we shall be doing very, very soon, fingers crossed. So before we start, um, I would just like to remind you that if you have any questions for Joanne, please put them into the Q&A box at the bottom um, of, of the screen there. Um, Joanne will not answer questions during the presentation. So if you have questions, put them in the Q&A box and she will answer them at the end of her presentation. Okay, Joanne, I shall hand over to you now. Enjoy everybody. This is a really interesting session. Thank you so much, Nadine. And uh, thank you to everyone for coming along today. It's great to see so many nationalities and lots of returning faces as well. So as Nadine mentioned, I am going to talk about student pastoral care. And specifically today, I'm talking about the pastoral care of your adult students, particularly if you are working remotely. So if they're away from the school, um, still studying online, how do we keep them connected? And how do we make sure that they're doing okay while they're working remotely and studying remotely? So we're gonna focus on student welfare while we're in the middle of a crisis and how a crisis might affect the concerns and worries of students. And we're going to look at that aspect of being remote and um, being uh, disconnected from our students physically um, and seeing how we can connect with them online and make sure that they don't disengage while they're studying online. So a lot of what I speak about today is based on uh, the experience within ATC, what we've tried, what's worked really well and what we've discovered over the past 12 months. So we're going to cover student concerns, what worries students might have, what do they worry about now in the middle or near the end of a pandemic and what did they used to worry about before this crisis hit us. I'm going to talk about what worked for ATC and I'm also going to talk about what we can consider as we go forward and as we start to open up and get back to classrooms. So funnily enough, we have a lot of the dream team with us today. Uh, I see them as participants. Uh, I want to introduce you to some people who are instrumental in keeping our students uh, happy and making sure they're okay and that they have everything they need 
while we work online. So I'm going to introduce you to seven really important people. Now, there are loads of people in ATC working on so many different things. We're really lucky to have a brilliant team. But these guys speak to the students every day. They're talking to them every day. They know their concerns. So I'm going to introduce you to them now. So we have Alison, uh, who's the Director of Studies in Dublin, Vicky, who's the Assistant Director of Studies in Dublin, and Naira, who's our receptionist in Dublin. And then over on the right, we have Aoife, who is the Director of Studies in our Bray School, Colette, who's our Assistant Director of Studies in the Bray School, and Jasmine, who is our receptionist in the Bray School. And it's important to note that our receptionists in Dublin and Bray also are very involved in our social program, but also support student welfare and student pastoral care. And then in the middle, somebody who, who connects us all when it comes to student welfare is Talita. And Talita uh, works with all our students to make sure that they're okay. And everything I talk about over the next 45 minutes or so uh, has been influenced by everybody here that you see in front of you. They, they talk to the students all the time, they interact with the students all the time, and many of the ideas and the procedures that we put in place came from this team. And Talita is uh, the woman at the forefront of everything. She drives the social program and she drives the welfare initiatives. Um, and without this web of communication between departments, I don't think we could have looked after our students as well as we did this year. So I had to introduce you to these key players before uh, moving into the, the main part of our session. So to give you a bit of background to our schools, our adult schools are very busy. Um, Pre-pandemic, they were full all the time. And, and we have a really great nationality mix. So we have lots of European students as well as students from Latin America and Asia. And uh, within our face-to-face -face classes, there's a great mix and a really good dynamic feel to our lessons. And our year-round schools are uh, in really nice locations. So we have a Dublin city centre school, which has 240 students in the morning and 200 students in the afternoon. So this is when we're face to face before we had our, our crisis um, with the, the COVID-19 pandemic. We had a very busy Dublin city centre school. And our Bray School, which is located on the seafront, and this is where uh, Nadine is located and where Aoife and Colette uh, work uh, when we're face to face with students. This school is uh, a really intimate kind of, it feels like a, a family based, family run kind of environment. Uh, and it had a, a busy uh, 260 student capacity. So it was always really busy, lots of face to face interaction. And you can imagine at break times in our Dublin school and our Bray school, the energy and the vibrancy was just amazing. Um, and the students had lots of access to our directors of studies, and they had obviously loads of access to each other. And there was a vibrant uh, social program that was really popular with students. There was always parties and uh, different types of get togethers and hikes and um, you know extra lessons, all sorts of things that students could get involved in. So in 2020, we went from this dynamic, busy, face-to-face -face environment in both Dublin and Bray, straight into an overnight lockdown where everybody had to stay at home, uh, students had to study from home, teachers taught them from home, and the entire academic and administrational staff were working from their homes. So it was an, an immediate change overnight, and it was a shock to a lot of people. And it was a real shock to students. And we learned very quickly that students needed a huge amount of support. And the people that I introduced you to at the start of this session uh, are directors of studies, assistant directors of studies, and our receptionists were at the, the, the forefront of student communication. They 
were receiving emails, phone calls, um, and lots of questions from students from the very beginning. And schools were faced with some difficulties because uh, yes, we had to put um, academic provision online and we had to make sure our students were okay, but schools were also faced with lots of logistical difficulties that they had to overcome. All our teams were working from home. Our routines and roles had changed quite a bit. Most people ended up with slightly different roles or took on new challenges to try and uh, help get through the situation. And it became harder to stay connected with students. It's very easy for that face-to-face -face, um, natural relationship to flourish in a school. Uh, but suddenly when you're online, there is that disconnect and sometimes that can cause relationships to break down. So it was really important for us to try and maintain a healthy, connected, good relationship with our students. And when you feel that impact of face-to-face -face or that nice dynamic of face-to-face -face interactions disappearing, you really need to put something in place to make sure that you maintain connections. There were lots of new systems and procedures and they were hard for everybody to get their head around. There were new platforms that we had to teach with and we, we needed to make sure that students were engaging in those platforms. And of course, there were lots of academic pressures. So there was so much going on at once. Uh, so this was overwhelming for staff, but also would have been quite overwhelming for students. So I'm going to ask you a question I want you to answer it in the chat box. Can you tell me what concerns did your students have before February 2020? So before the global pandemic took over our lives, what concerns did your students have? For example, in ATC, the main student concerns were visa related. So regarding their attendance, regarding their end of school exam, regarding their visa paperwork. These were the things that students were really asking questions about and interested about. And I see in the chat box, um, we have some suggestions. Yeah, maintaining a attendance in school, but also balancing their work life uh, because they're trying to live here in Ireland away from home. Uh, another suggestion is um, they were unsure if they were studying at the right level. They would often ask to change classes or um, maybe just ask the teacher to assess them and see if they're ready to change classes. Another concern that students would have had is accommodation and deciding where to live or finding a, a suitable place to live. So they're all the things that would affect students day to day before the crisis. And now I want to ask you a second question. What concerns have your students presented with from February 2020 to now? So over the past 14 months, uh, what have your students been worried about? Are they the same things or different things? For example, with ATC, uh, at the beginning, one of the main concerns was connectivity and being able to um, have strong Wi-Fi to connect to the online lessons. That was one of the big things that students were concerned about. Um, another suggestion has come through the chat box. Lots of students were concerned about their families. Uh, they were homesick. They were not able to travel home. Um, they, yeah, the family seems to be the, the big thing that they were worried about. OK, and the fear of the unknown, that was a big thing because they would ask questions and sometimes we didn't have answers for those questions. So that's that's really difficult. Some students were vulnerable as well. They had health issues or they lived with people who have health issues. OK, well, let's take a closer look. So at the time, we identified that students had this feeling of being lost, not sure what to do. Should I uh, suspend my, my lessons and go home? Should I stay and hope that things work out? It was very difficult for them to, to make the big decisions in, in such a short space of time. They were quite worried. They were homesick. 
some of them felt isolated and lonely. The main worries of our adult students, I've talked about them, they've come through the chat quite a bit, but their main worries were work and finances. Will they find work in a global pandemic or will they be able to keep their job? And how are they going to maintain their life in a different country during a crisis? They were worried about accommodation. They were worried about um, suitable accommodation that would help them social distance if somebody got sick. And they also worried about Wi-Fi connectivity, engaging online with their lessons, and if all of this would affect their progress. Because uh, adult students, as you know, are really focused on uh, the end point and success in learning a language. So they were very focused on their progress. And then they had uh, visa concerns. Uh, is their visa valid while they're studying online? Uh, what do they have to do to make sure that their visa gets renewed? So they had all these questions. And on top of that, they had increased loneliness and isolation, particularly if they were living on their own or if they were living with people that maybe they weren't close to. They're going through a very strange time in the world in a different country. But actually, if you dig down into these problems, you'll see that they're, the, they're worries that students always had. Students always worried about work and finances. They always asked questions and needed support with accommodation. They uh, would always be very interested in having accommodation with good connectivity and good Wi-Fi. And as we said before, visa concerns were always top of their list. However, when you put these worries into the context of the crisis that we've just been through, uh, anxiety, depression uh, and fear are greatly increased. So uh, what our team found, our academic team and our student welfare team found is that they were coming with the same problems, but they may have been exacerbated. They uh, may have been uh, even more anxious than they would normally be because the pressure is so much greater in this strange situation that they found themselves in. So the first thing we realised very quickly is that strong academic provision online and making sure the students were content in their classes took a huge amount of worry from the students. Now, online academic provision is a whole webinar or a whole course in itself. So uh, obviously I can't go into it in this session because this is about what happens outside the classroom. But one of the biggest steps towards keeping your students, um, well, I can't say anxiety free, but making sure they have lower levels of anxiety is ensuring that they're happy with their academic provision. And that really alleviates a huge amount of worry then they don't have to worry about their progress. They know that they're in good hands. Uh, they enjoy their online lessons every day and at least they have that sort of connection with the school. So once you have your academic provision in hand, then you need to think about what students are doing after lessons. Are they engaging with other people or are they sitting on their own from 1.30 in the day until bedtime? If you cast your mind back to the start of the pandemic, particularly within Europe, we all found ourselves in our houses in March and it was, it, it felt like a, a different type of, of lockdown to the other ones we've experienced because we, we truly were just stuck in our houses and people were very afraid to go out. So what were students doing? Some of them might have been working, but some of them might have lost their jobs. Some of them may have been on social media or news sites, and some of them might have been connecting with family online. But it was very hard for us to know what they were doing with their time after their online lessons. And it, there was a great danger here of them disconnecting uh, from the school and losing those great connections that they had built up from face to face interactions. And we know that loneliness, it has a, a detrimental effect on mental health. So as we talked about, anxiety and depression can escalate and increase in a crisis situation. 
And if your students get into that cycle of increased desperate, uh, sorry, depression and anxiety, it can start to affect their sleep patterns. They may find they're spending a lot of time online scrolling till two or three o'clock in the morning, uh, reading news or just going down rabbit holes. And then this poor sleep quality has an effect on their day and how they perform. Uh, if they find that their days are going badly, then it will um, increase again this feeling of dep depression or anxiety. And if these feelings go unchecked and bad habits or detrimental habits start to form, then you get into the position of poor physical health. So you have this direct um, impact from um, poor mental health or, or um, you know, a, a lack of sleep and increased anxiety to actually ha having an effect on physical health. And so it's important for every school um, that deals with adults, you know, any, any school that, that has adults who don't have a support network like family or friends in their vicinity, we need to make sure that we nip these problems in the bud so that they don't go down that rabbit hole and end up with poor mental health leading to uh, poor physical health. So we had to keep up the connection with our students. It was really important that we didn't let that connection slip. So we knew that the connection had to be virtual and it had to be easily accessible for the students. Nothing too complicated, nothing that costs them money and something that's just a few clicks away, something very easy. We needed to implement this really quickly, just like online lessons. This almost had to happen overnight, but we were very lucky in ATC that we put a team together that worked really well. I'll talk about that soon. We also needed to put something online for students that was relevant and engaging, because when you've done four hours of lessons online, it's a struggle to then try and do some social activities online. Um, I think most of us would struggle with that. So we had to really make sure that what we were offering students and how we were connecting with them was actually relevant to them. And then keeping up consistency so that students knew that certain things happened at certain times every week uh, was very important to keep that engagement. If we were a little bit um, loose or slapdash with our timetable, uh, you, you know, you would see a drop off in uh, engagement. So that consistency where they know something's going to happen uh, throughout the week and it happens like clockwork, you get more students involved. And of course, it had to be cost effective for the school because uh, like most schools, it was a very difficult time. So to get started, uh, the best thing to do is to identify strong team members that you can get together who can help you create a really dynamic virtual social programme. So we combined members of the academic, social media, reception, accommodation and student welfare teams. And we're so lucky in ATC because we have really fun, uh, interesting members of staff who throw themselves into projects. So, so by having this team that spanned a few different departments, we really managed to put together a virtual social programme that had a wide range of different activities that students were really interested in. It's a good idea to survey your students and try and find out what they actually want. What will they want to engage in? Uh, there's no point giving them things that they don't want and then you're expending a lot of energy and they're not showing up. Identify your resources. So who can you have on your team? What platforms can you use? Do you have a budget or do you have to really improvise and try, try and do it uh, in a very cost effective way? And then identify your popular platforms. Where do you engage students online? Is it Instagram or Facebook or some other who actually engage with students on a day to day basis? And then when you know your popular platforms, utilize them. And I'll show you in a moment how we combined our social media and our social program to go hand in hand to try and engage students. So we already have um, a, a learning platform. We have ATC Online 
And one of the first things that our directors of studies and assistant directors of studies did was make sure that every single student fully understood how to log on and how to engage on ATC Online. Because this, this was going to be where they could sign up for their activities, where they could sign up for social uh, student welfare chats. Everything would be on here uh, and it would be more important than ever. So um, a little bit of an audit of that and making sure students were really familiar with it and could access it was one of the first things the academic team did. The next thing uh, the team did, and this was uh, Talita, Naira, Jasmine, uh, Crystal and Philip. Uh, they worked together to set up a series of one to one welfare chats and they worked this into the social programme. And the students could book these chats through the booking system on ATC online. So because uh, the academic team had already done the groundwork and made sure everybody was using ATC online, then it made the setup of these welfare chats a smooth process. And the welfare chats turned out to be extremely beneficial for the students because they could bring up small problems that they were experiencing that we could solve quickly, or they could talk about things in more detail, anything that was really bothering them. If they were feeling lonely, they could just have a, an informal chat, or if they needed some advice, if they needed to be directed towards maybe a counseling service or any other service that we didn't have on site, uh, we were able to do that for them. So these welfare chats were the first thing that were put in place to make sure that we were looking after students. And we always reminded the students, if they have a problem, book a chat, there's always somebody there to talk to. But the real challenge was to stay connected on a day-to-day -day basis with students. As I said, they were in school from uh, about um, 9 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. online. So they were you know, doing their online lessons. And then to get them back online to do something different could sometimes be a challenge. So we started with social media. And the first thing we did was start to address the issues that students were facing. So our posts started to focus on things like managing COVID-19 stress, things to keep you busy at home. So all sorts of tips from rearranging your room to cleaning tips to uh, uh, directions to or, uh, yoga sites where you can go and, and, and try different uh, easy forms of yoga. And we also shared information with them about looking after their well-being through meditation and through mindfulness. So we adapted our social media posts so that they actually reflected the situation that was going on, but also that they would be useful for the students. And then we started to connect our social media posts to the social program. So uh, we would promote uh, Irish movie nights or um, virtual museum and gallery visits uh, to get students uh, along the lines of this virtual uh, thinking. So um, showing them that you can still engage in things, you can still engage in activities, but it's going to be digital, it's going to be online. My advice to anybody who's trying to do this virtually is to take some risks, okay? So try to think outside the box and do something a little different. And as I said before, ATC is full of staff members with uh, a number of talents. And this is Crystal, who's an incredible baker. And Crystal uh, conducted the ATC Bake Off every Friday. She taught the students how to bake something new or she would teach them uh, something different, like how to make uh, Korean coffee, how to make an Irish coffee. And she invited the students then to submit their own baking success stories uh, over social media. <clears throat> so it was this idea of engaging students over social media to try and draw them in to more types of activities or extended activities that would happen on the social program. We also set up lots of challenges and competitions 
And my advice in this area would be to get staff members to enter those challenges and enter those competitions also, because it can be slow to get uh, student um, entries. So if you're getting entries from staff members and people that you know and you're sharing them, then students are more motivated to share theirs. So this was a photography competition where students were invited to take a photo from their window because this is when we were still in true lockdown. We couldn't really leave our houses unless we were going to the shops uh, or going on our 2K walk. So we had the students take photos from their bedrooms or from their apartments or wherever they were living. And this is the winning picture. We had a student from Russia who was lucky enough to have uh, an apartment overlooking the River Liffey in Dublin. And she submitted this and she won some uh, free one-to-one -one lessons. But in the process of this competition, we had loads of entries from staff members and other students. And it really um, made our social media and online content a lot more dynamic. We also embraced Instagram and Facebook lives. Um, and we did lots of different things on these live sessions. So sometimes we got a director of studies or a teacher to do a grammar ask me anything, which is a brave thing I think to do. <laughs> we also talked about meditation and well-being online. We did a live yoga class and we had um, some chats with that particular yoga teacher about looking after yourself and maintaining your mental health while in lockdown. We had a chat with some former students and we had uh, some sessions about Irish idioms and sayings and students uh, could talk to us live over uh, Instagram and Facebook and ask us these questions and we would answer them live. So it was this idea of making our social media uh, a more uh, interactive place and students could see that we're there, we're, we're here, even if we're not face to face, we're here to talk to you. And <coughs> What we were, our aim was to show students that then if they wanted an extension of this, sign up to our social program, um, our, our virtual social program, and they have even more of these activities. So this is an example of one of the social programs. This was from our Easter week. And uh, we've lots of things like trivia nights, free classes, the student welfare meeting or chats, um, pronunciation lessons, uh, afternoon tea. So there's <clears throat> lots of opportunity to talk together, to meet other students that maybe they hadn't met before um, or they hadn't seen since uh, the start of lockdown. So the idea was to get people interacting and to get people socialising, even if it was virtually, which we know isn't as good as face to face, but it was something to keep them connected. And Talita came up with some amazing ideas. She has such a good rapport with the students. She would hold things like language cafes or an afternoon tea and chat um, where they would pick a theme and talk about it. And then that might expand into more general chit chat. But students are connecting with other people who are not in their classroom. They are connecting with Talita and building a relationship with her which means they're building trust and then they feel they're able to confide in her if they have any problems. So if you ask any ATC student, past or present, they know who Talita is because she makes herself so available to them. They also know who our directors of studies are and our assistant directors of studies are and our receptionists. They know them so well because uh, these guys make it their business to be available for the students and to make sure the students are okay. And Talita came up with a great idea of the virtual pub. So she holds that every Friday, but she also invites past students to come along. And she does get quite a few past students uh, dropping in to say hello, to have a drink, to have a chat. And it, it's really nice. I mean, now in Ireland, things are opening up and there's definitely a more positive uh, feeling in the country. But, you know, we had a long winter of not being able to do anything. Um, and 
these sorts of activities actually got more popular for Talita. She got more and more signups as the winter kind of drew in and the, the, there was less to do in the evenings. We had arts and crafts sessions, which were really popular around this time last year. People got into painting and other types of crafts. And uh, the social uh, program team started to make really interesting links. So they would do things like a virtual tour of an Irish whiskey distillery. And then later in the evening, they would do a tutorial on how to make Irish coffee. So we try and make those links and get students to uh, do different kind of interesting, engaging activities. And one of Talita's uh, favourite things to do is to throw a seasonal event. So when we're face to face, she has these fantastic events like decorating the school for Halloween or Christmas, uh, mask making, all sorts of creative things. And she really threw herself into transferring these types of activities online and they were very popular so here you can see pumpkin carving for halloween and this particular one which i took part in as well uh, it was a quiz and bingo for uh, saint patrick's day and we had so many students involved really busy uh, virtual activity and compare that to at the beginning when students were a little bit hesitant to join in those types of activities it was a real success and that was all due to Atisha building up relationships with the students and always being in contact with them so they knew who she was and they knew the types of things that she organized um, and that is a, a key part of keeping students connected and as I mentioned before the students were faced with real life worries so looking for a job or the possibility of losing their current job and making sure that they're in good accommodation. They may have had to change accommodation during the pandemic. Uh, so there was a lot of stress on, on students in that real life situation. So the team organized LinkedIn and CV workshops. So Talita did that in conjunction with our academic team. And she also organized daft.ie workshops. And this is a website that everyone in Ireland uses to find rental accommodation. And it can be difficult to navigate. It can also be difficult to identify good accommodation from not so good accommodation. And Talita was a student in ATC Dublin. She arrived in Ireland in 2014. So Talita has been through it all. She's seen every type of accommodation. She's met a lot of landlords. She knows all the tricks and she knows all the, the tips that can really um, help students out. And students trust her because they know that she's been in that situation. So she was in the perfect position to give these online workshops to help them through day-to-day -day real life problems. So we are ongoing, like we, we're, we're still giving these uh, virtual activities. And if you go on our social media, you'll see that we're still, uh, we still have a virtual social program. We still try and engage students as much as we can online, but we will be back in the classroom and we hope to be back in the classroom within the next few weeks. And this is another source of anxiety for students. Um, like most of us, there, there's anxiety there with being back in a building and um, being in a classroom with other people, making sure that you're safe. So a huge part of student welfare, welfare is ensuring that the return to classrooms is uh, very safe, um, that they understand what's happening and what's um, being put in place to keep them safe and that they also get training. So it's not just your staff that need to be trained about the return to school, but your students need to be trained as well about how to return to school safely. So it's really important that you listen to the concerns of your students. Uh, what are they worried about? And you know, do they have any suggestions about the return to school? 
We had a short return to school from August to October and then again for a short time in December last year. And we sent out surveys to students to find out what they were worried about and what they expected from us. This was very useful because it helps you fill in any blanks, anything you may have missed, but it also reassures students that they have a voice, that they are stakeholders within the school and that you're listening to them. So based on uh, the procedures and, and what needs to go into place uh, when you get back to school, you need to give um, training. And we did this in the form of videos and FAQs. So we made sure that all students had access to um, a back to school video, which was specific. We made it, it was specific to our school and what they needed to know. And we created documents so they had everything in student friendly language. You need to make your procedures clear and accessible. So as long as they can find it on a website or you're posting it on social media, uh, that's really important. And continue that communication. So make sure that you're using different channels of communication, maybe um, social media, your learner management system and emails to try and get everybody and make sure everybody has all the details they need before they come back to school. And always be ready to answer their questions. Adult students will always have a lot of valid questions. And even if we don't have specific answers for them at the moment, it's important to give them some kind of guidance or some sort of um, answer that will help them feel reassured and help them feel listened to. When you do return to classes, and for us, uh, this is what we plan to do, is we will have a combination of virtual um, social programs and face-to-face -face social programs, because it will take a while before we're able to do a full social program in the way we used to. So we're not going to throw away those really great activities that uh, Talita and the team came up with over the past year. So there'll be a nice combination and students can pop in and out either virtually or take part in the, the outdoor activities that we will be allowed to hold this summer. So my top tips are ATC's top tips, and these come from the team that I just introduced you to. So our academic team, our receptionist and social welfare, as student welfare team, and Talita, who's our student welfare officer. These are some tips for you if you ever find yourself in a crisis with students. It may not be exactly like the one we're in now, but uh, you, know, you may find yourself uh, in, in a situation where you need to think a little bit differently about your students' welfare. The top priority is communication. And as I said, try and expand your modes of communication as much as you can. So don't just rely on email. Um, some schools use WhatsApp groups. Uh, it's good to use your learner management system or your like our version of ATC online. Uh, and you can also use social media. So try and spread that communication far and wide and put all your information on your website as well. Importantly, students need to know who is on the team that can help them. So they need to know who they talk to for their lessons, who they talk to if they are feeling anxious or depressed, and who they can talk to if they need help with accommodation. Make a strategy. Think about how you're going to keep connected and keep engaged with students. How are you going to keep them on board if anything like this happens in the future? And and finally, consistency is really important. Um, consistency means that students know what to expect. It also uh, takes away that uh, feeling of anxiety or the fear of the unknown. So if you're consistent in your procedures and your communication is really strong, you will have calmer, happier students. And that idea of openness and transparency, we often talk about this when it comes to staff members, but it's really important as well when we're talking about adult students. Because our adult students have invested a huge amount of money in coming to our country and learning about the country and learning the language. 
So it's really important that the school they're with is open and transparent and treats them with respect and lets them know what's happening. And again, this is a way of keeping students feeling calm and feeling like they're in safe hands. So that is the end of my session today. If you would like to look at any of our materials or lesson plans or watch back uh, uh, sessions from uh, past weeks, go to eltconnect.com. Aoife McLaughlin, who I introduced you to earlier in the session, uh, organises and uh, posts and um, keeps uh, ELT Connect going. She's, she's the, the brain power behind it. Um, and uh, she has loads of resources up there. So really, really good resources, whether you want articles on teaching, well-being, um, lesson plans, or you want to watch back the webinars, they're all there. So I highly recommend that you go to eltconnect.com. And if you want to connect with ATC further, if you want to know about our teacher training courses or our student courses, uh, email us info at atcireland.ie. There's always the blog as well, eltconnect.com, where you can connect with us. And if you go to atclanguageschools.com, you'll see that all our online courses are now live. So we have a suite of uh, junior summer courses, teacher training courses over the summer, and uh, regular adult online courses for both uh, exam students and uh, general English students. So there's a huge amount there and we would be delighted to connect with you further. So thank you very much for for coming along today. And if you have any questions, I think we still have lots of time for questions. Thanks, Joanne, that was really interesting. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's great to see it all from a different perspective. Um, yeah, a, a very important topic, I think, and, and shows us just how important it is to, to op keep those lines of communication open at all times um, and to connect and engage with students above and beyond um, delivery of academic programmes. Um, so thank you. Thank you for that. Thank Any you. questions for Joanne today? Just pop them into the Q&A there if you have any questions for her. Joanne, you'll be doing a, a follow up on Thursday, is that right, on Facebook? I will, yeah. So on Thursday at 1pm Irish time, I will be on ATC Language School's Facebook page. I'll just be doing a quick live, um, a chat about this topic, what we're talking about today. Uh, but also, if you have any questions at all about previous webinars, future webinars, come and say hello. I'll be there. And then next week, we have uh, another uh, webinar at 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. Irish time on Tuesday. And it's me again. I will be talking about managing a writing team. So that falls under the strand of materials writing and course development um, so you can join me there and you can sign up for that on eltconnect.com. I, I don't think we've any questions. I don't think we do have any questions, no. <laughs> I'll take that as a good sign. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, hang on, there's something in the chat. Let's see. Oh, thank you, Vicky. <laughs> thank you very much. So um, thank you so much to everyone for coming along. Uh, as I said, this webinar will be up on ELT Connect before the end of the week. So um, make sure you go on there and have a look. And thank you to Nadine for moderating today. Thank you, Joanne. Thank you everybody for coming along. Hopefully we'll see you all again next week. Thanks guys, see you. Thanks, bye-bye. <laughs>